Andy take over? Hey, how was your Wednesday? I mean, Tuesday. Wow. Well, I'll take a Wednesday if you got it, but it's Tuesday. Thank you, Scott. Hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. Hello, Scott. Hi, everybody. All right, good. I assume everybody can hear us. I hear you. Very good. Let's get started. And hello from Tel Aviv. Nice to see you, Ed Ben. All right. As the uh, usual audience trickles in here, we'll go through a few of the opening slides. Just a reminder that uh, we're a software as a subscription company here at Trade Ideas, and Andy and I are employees. And we've also been trading for a while and trade our own accounts. And we'll talk about a few things, but anything we talk about really is not designed to be financial advice and should not be construed as such. Got to leave that for the licensed professionals. And so we've been using this product about 18 years now and a lot of uh, iterations we've seen come through the years and it's a very powerful program. We recognize that. We've got a lot of new users coming in for many reasons, um, but a lot of activity and a lot of attention on the stock market usually does that to us, brings us new users. And the new users, I want to remind you uh, to try and be patient. It's a very in-depth, feature-rich program, and you can custom tune it to do what you want it to do, whether you're a short-term scalper or a longer-term swing trader. Um, it's not something that's learned overnight, so we do our best to try and get you guys up to speed and then learn the program as quick as possible. But just try and be patient with it. You know, Give it at least a week or two before you start to really dial it in the way you, uh, you're looking to use it. Uh, ways in which we can help you are every day in the traders room moderated by Barry, who's a saint in there for managing four or 500 people and their questions. He demonstrates anything that you uh, need demonstrated. He's very generous with his time in there and it's a free room. We have the afternoon webinars where we usually talk at you uh, with some pre-contrived uh, content like we'll do this afternoon, but every day the daily support sessions we go. You can get to that link at the bottom, trade-ideas.com forward slash live is a redirect link that takes you to our live trading room, which is actually Barry's room, but at noon Eastern every day, uh, one of the five or six of us now take over and kind of change up the flavor of the room and give live support. We talk about the markets, charts, whatever you want to talk about. Hopefully there's questions you have on the Trade Ideas platform so you can come up and ask us live and we can demonstrate back for you much easier than uh, trying to talk about things over the phone which we don't really have so the daily support sessions are a must if you're not aware of them all right as we get into the meat of the um, webinar the intro slide as usual just a reminder that we will live in a world of humans and machines or in our case ai but it uh, doesn't matter what the um, industry is healthcare energy finance, what have you, we're working with machines and two of us can't work as well without each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. And so uh, Trade Ideas is a wonderful platform, a wonderful accoutrement to the human trader. And uh, we always talk a lot about that. So, all right, the agenda for this week, uh, I'll do a market recap. There's no stop in this market. I got caught on my heels last week, but I'll talk about that. And uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, not a lot to talk about in the AI recap. The Tuesday curse continues to afflict us. And it's just kind of a mediocre uh, overall performance. And, but Andy can find a couple of nuggets within there, I'm sure. Uh, also a trade of the week, uh, RVP, uh, calling it a short float play. But we're going to dive into that tremendously uh, this week. It was a little disappointing. And we'll, I'll talk about how I handled it. And we'll use it as a good learning case. I'm going to go through the trade kind of very slowly and talk about how I decided to play it. And we'll just leave it at that and pique your interest. Revisit, I mentioned the jam down to the 10 SMA alert window, but you know, I was showing that today in the uh, live uh, noon session, and there's just a lot of good stuff in there. So if anybody missed it last week, we're going to revisit a couple of things that popped in there this week, and I'll share that out as well. And then we're just going to go through again. I think, you know, Andy mentioned and reminded me, you know, you guys do, I think, enjoy looking for scans and ideas and maybe a short list of ideas to watch for tomorrow. So we'll go through and see what we can find for tradable, actionable ideas tomorrow. All right. With that being said, we will start here on the daily chart using the S&P. Now, again, Last week, you guys remember, I was um, giving kind of a mea culpa. I was d defensively positioned in VIX, 
and a few other things that were defensive. Let's just remind ourselves what VIX looked like. I mean, that was a pretty big move off the lows, and I fully expected some follow through. But after we didn't get any follow through, I started to bail, you know. And inversely speaking, if we go back to the SPY, I mentioned. Um, market had some work to do to get back up and through these moving averages and what would convince me that I was wrong would be a nice closing candle or two above the moving averages and boy that didn't take much time at all so I literally, literally cleared the decks on whatever I could that was defensive and just said hey the swings gonna the jump ropes gonna set back up again for some swing trades and uh, we'll find some and I'll go through and I'll show you some of the stuff that we're in but as far as the market recap goes we've had a big bounce off these lows here and you know it's just like this market it's always done in the past and we've always you know kind of warned people especially in the IWM getting a lot of separation between uh, the current price action and our trending dang it, our price and our trending moving averages down here so there's a lot of airspace in there and I think we've all seen over the last few months market can take back five days real quickly just like that and so when the market gets this far extended above its moving averages whether I go back to the SPY or the NASDAQ I just feel like uh, you know something a little the sideways action might be nice maybe a little bit of a pullback but um, some sort of consolidation is due uh, what I hope we don't get is just another one of those stupid lurch downs that all happens at once. But there is no bear case to be made. Um, and again, uh, using my situation as an example, uh, you've got to be quick. You've got to be agile to not just sit here and say, well, I know I'm right. I know this market's in for a big correction and the price action is telling me I'm wrong, but darn it, I'm right. And so you can't do that. you got to just flip on a dime, flip the switch, clear the decks, and then as I said a little bit later, I'll show you some of the stuff that I wound up getting into over the last few days as I saw some things setting up that didn't look like a giant chase. So again, the NASDAQ, they all look the same. I think we're just due for some consolidation. It would, it would be really welcome, really, just to see some simple consolidation like that. Let these moving averages kind of come up and just force this market higher, because that seems to be what it wants to do. Anything you want to add to the flavor of the overall trend market here, Andy? Uh, no, there's not a whole lot to add, Steve. Like I, I've been saying, you know, when the market's at all time the highs, there's not a whole lot of you know dissecting you can do and 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 trying to you know. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? <laughs> you know, play the individual it's, it's names. What you do? Yeah, you just play the names that look good and don't look yeah. look too extended. That's all. Yeah, I, I was talking about as far as breaking it down. Technically, there's oh, not sure. a whole lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, just all yeah. time highs. Yeah, for sure. All right, and let me take it over and hit briefly on uh, on Holly. Not a whole lot to talk about there either today, but uh, I'll do my best. Uh, well, first of all, I always kind of like to look what she had to work with, and and because Holly gets out of all of her trades at the end of the day, she's technically a day trader, I guess. Uh, so. Not a whole lot of follow through in either direction. So a lot of back and forth. Market opened up. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have my Epic pin up, but I'm not going to open it. But you, you can see what I'm talking about. Just a lot of uh, back and forth action, the spiders, and kind of an ugly candle there at the end. But still finished up one day. And it looks like it's trading up higher in after hours. So uh, yeah, no real damage there done. But looking at Holly now, I think. Uh, you know, there was about, let's see, 12, 13 trades, uh, more stop outs that I'd like to see. Uh, so I'm not going to call this a good day at all. Uh, and you can see here in my moderate uh, profit on on this window, uh, she finished basically flat down, uh, down $12. That's moderate. Now, if I go to conservative, it's going to be worse than that. We don't pay any attention to aggressive because it's a very dangerous one. And I think we're going to be taking it off soon. Uh, conservative, which normally outperforms moderate, uh, I'm sorry, moderate always, uh, not always, but uh, in the back office performs, outperforms uh, conservative by a wide margin, and that happened to be the case today as well, even though uh, it was basically fat on the day. A couple of trades uh, to the long, the, see all the big winners were to the long side in moderate profit. Uh, shorts, you know, I, you know, people come to me all the time and they want to auto trade Holly. Uh, you know, I, 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 there's nothing wrong with paper trading, getting a feel for it. Uh, if you are going to do it, I would definitely recommend, you know, putting on moderate profit because we do see in the in the uh, uh, back office, uh, once again, it, it outperforms uh, conservative by a huge margin. Uh, but at the same time, I think, uh, you know, if you 
want to do some sort of gray boxing where you let Holly get you in the trades and you kind of manage them. I think that can even better be better if you're an experienced trader. Uh, the reason I say a lot of these ones, you can tell right away when they don't work. And so instead of letting them go to the stop, maybe you can exit early or, you know, just, it's just uh, the times I have kind of played around with it, that's when I've done my best versus just hooking up to the auto trader and letting it run. Uh, but HBI was not a bad one today. Now it got off to a just incredible gap up in a, you know, first, uh, you know, five to 10 minute run. There's nothing you do about that unless you just want to jump in you know, right at the get go, which can be very dangerous, but this one kind of jumped up, went sideways for a while. You got the signal right there, kind of a no pain trade, went higher. And uh, if you would have uh, bought that and held it to the end of the day, you would have done done pretty good with that trade. So uh, next one was ORTX, which was another good one. And this one, <clears throat> you had a lot more, you know, to uh, alpha than where it closed today. You can see this thing ran all the way up to around 885, 886, uh, settled back down and then, you know, closed around what, 825 or something like that. But a uh, beautiful call there on a pullback. You can see the wick went down a little bit below. Uh, so you should have had time to get in that one if you were watching it. And what I like about this one is looking at the daily over here, you had a nice breakout, you know, on the daily as well to kind of confirm things. Uh, so a good call there. Uh, Yala, I thought, uh, was kind of messy. Uh, you can see that just went up and it's not I'm not going to sit there and, you know, try to sugarcoat this too much because it did fall back below the entry price. So that one would have been a tough one. And uh, you can see several stopouts today. So a very ho-hum day in moderate profit, basically flat on the day. Uh, but Steve, that's about, that's about all I have on Holly. I'm going to shoot it back to you. Unless you want to add yep. something. No, okay. no, no problem. Okay. Just wish it would uh, do better on Tuesdays for us to talk I about know. a little bit Tuesday's more. Because I've, I've seen some days where it's just great stuff. But, had a great trade uh, yesterday in uh, in Mara. <clears throat> well, you know, it had one in, in SunPower, too, that uh, made the short list of the uh, trades of the week. Didn't call that one. We called RVP, so a good transition. So back to my screen here. I've got it all set up. As to what RVP looked like going into the weekend, and it was, of course, on the A table scan as well. There it is right there, RVP. And the reason it's on the scan is because it has a very high short float of about 30% of a very low float, which makes it volatile, 14 and a half million shares. So, you know, this was uh, the setup going into the weekend, and um, the concept for the trade was uh, a trigger at 1956 or 57, I believe. And so for the second week in a row, I'm so just giddy to report that the trade kind of got away from us on the silly, stupid gap up again. And then it really became confounding. So I'd like to walk everybody through how I traded this and I'm gonna drag Andy into it as well. Um, because Andy took a different type of entry, and that might wind up making a different type of experience for, for Andy. Um, I'm going to leave the daily as it is right there. We're going to go over here to the 15 minute, and you know the uh, the trigger price was right about there, 1958. As you can see, it gapped up to about 20, raced up to 21. Well, we talked last week a lot about not always the best thing to do to chase a gap right out of the gate. There's usually going to be a better setup for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play the time machine game here a little bit <clears throat> and move forward to this point right here. I mentioned last week the rising 10 period moving average is usually an area of interest. And that is where I took the trade of the week, which is literally, it was about 10 cents above our trigger price, 1956 is right about there. And I was about 10 cents above. And so feeling pretty good, actually. I'm going to turn that off. But that was the entry right there. Feeling pretty good the way it looked like it was starting to develop right in the moving average. A couple of nice tests. And then all of a sudden, it dropped. And as you've heard me say many times, I don't like intraday momentum to be broken. And I'll recognize that when the price candles break and close, post a closing candle below the 10 period moving average. Now, this is a swing trade. This isn't a scalp trade. Now, if somebody was uh, looking to take, you know, get free looks and try not to have too much drawdown, then I wouldn't blame them for wanting to get out of this because it looks like the momentum broke there midday. But this is a swing trade. So my thought process 
which is what I'm going to walk you through here, my thought process was, okay, all right, well, looks like it just got a bit ahead of itself. Let's default back to the daily here. And at the moment, that's what our daily looked like. Okay, we were way up here, and then uh, we actually closed with a bit of a red candle right below our trigger price. I'm going to go forward one more day, and you can see the sell tag kind of gives away what I did with this trade, but let's walk through it here. So here's yesterday again, can't get back above that moving average. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna fill the gap it looks like, okay. But um, still keeping an eye on the daily picture and reminder, let's pull up the content of the trade. The, the content of the trade is to, um, the suggested stop will be to not let the price close under the rising 10 day simple moving average. And I know that can be kind of a nebulous description, but we're gonna try and work through that, this trade, because it gave us a good example to really kind of iron out what I mean by all that and how I would uh, approach it. Because today was, could, could have gone either way. So back to yesterday here in the middle of the day, <clears throat> filling the gap, just staying below our momentum line, not really, there's a test right there, could have worked through, but didn't, failed test as we get deeper into the day. Now all of a sudden this five day moving average is coming into play. You've heard me talk a lot about this as well and it's starting to get pinched. And I think, okay, well, oop, okay, we just broke that. Now we're into today. We're into uh, the early morning of um, February 9th here. And we've pretty much broken down through my 15 minute parameters through both things that I don't want, I didn't want to see break. But as I look back over, um, I know, and here's the key average, the 10 period moving average today was it, we're gonna call it 1803, it was 1805, we're gonna call it 1803 at the close. I'm gonna use 1805 because that was the number I had in my mind. Well, here's 1805 right here, and this was the moment where we got very close. We got extremely close right here to the 10 period moving average, but we hadn't quite touched it yet. There was still a little bit of daylight in there. And this is where I'm gonna drag Andy into it because Andy, didn't take the trade along where I did. And by just pure happenstance and timing, he said, you know what? I'm gonna take an entry right here, didn't you, Andy? As you got yeah. close to the 10 period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. So uh, I still didn't like the way it closed, but uh, yeah, I, I'm in a we'll much better price. Yeah. yeah, we'll yeah. get to that. So Andy's got a lot more staying power than I do because I took the trade kind of where we were supposed to on the pullback, thought I had a good entry. Now we're getting into, let's look at the end of the day here, and we're getting uh, midday, another chance for it to break that downtrending momentum line. Could it do it? Nope, big fake out. The sellers are still in control. So as we move on to the day here, there becomes the test. This candle right there actually was the test. And I wanna stop and remind people again that algorithms and quant funds are what run and make markets these days. And a lot of times these things like to hit their targets before they even attempt to make a reversal. And so my thought process at this point was, okay, um, Andy got in 10 cents before it, you know, just kind of a free look, but it's rolled back over and taken a second low out. Maybe this is where they clean out the weak hands and we technically did touch our 10 day moving average. But remember the risk management suggestion was to not let it close under because many times these things happen midday and then they jerk the rug and run the stops and close it back up and you get a decent close at the end of the day and you kick yourself for getting out midday. I try not to make decisions to get out midday. It's all about the end of the day and that's kind of what we're working towards because we really had to work towards the end of the day to decide is this thing, okay, here's this big candle washing out down here and this was the moment in time I said, okay, that's my line in the sand right there. That candle had a nice washout, had a nice recovery really need to build on this candle. If it can't build on this candle, I'm probably gonna get out because if it doesn't close at five minutes to the bell, if it doesn't look like it's gonna close above that 10 period, I'm gonna follow my rules and get out. And remember guys, I'm being watched on this trade. It's not something I can just hide in the shadows and do. So I know I'm gonna have to explain myself at some point. So that was what I was thinking. All right, let's move forward a little bit here more. Another red candle, making it hard. Okay, there is a nice green candle at the close. Could we build on that? Andy and I thought we might have had a chance. All we had to do is get back above maybe, and this is what I told myself, guys, it's been just decimated by this momentum line. Okay, this is what has been controlling it. If I can't get this thing to close back above this intraday movement, and it's sitting down there, you know, 
a judgment call as to whether it's close enough to the uh, moving average, I'm just going to say, look, I need this stock to get back above that moving average before the end of the day. And if it doesn't do it, I'm going to get out. And as we move forward for the remainder here, that's it. That's the best we got. So at five minutes, and that's what I want to say to you guys. It all comes down to how did the stock go out at the end of the day? I can handle these tests. I prefer to see them early in the day and then have the stock go out strong, go out with a nice tailing wick. But if it's gonna go out on the close as a marginal and, and technically it did not get back to is five or six cents below the 10 period moving average. Now, for somebody like Andy who took a free look down there pretty close, he's not that far out of the money right now. So he's gonna stick around and see what tomorrow brings. I've seen many charts that look like this and in hindsight you go, oh yeah, that wick tried to shake you out, but yeah, it bounced right back. It very well might bounce back, but I don't want this on my screen anymore. This thing didn't do what I expected to do. It basically failed me pretty much in the early part of yesterday. It failed me right here. I really wanted it to uh, hold these levels right there. Gosh darn it, need a bigger pen but it didn't, it failed and it never looked back for a day and a half. And so at the end of the day, it couldn't get back above this 10 period moving average, above my five day and five cents below what I called out as our risk management on this trade. I couldn't take it, I dipped, I don't want it anymore. It was just taking away mental. This thing took all my friggin' focus on the end of the day. I didn't really want it to, but it did. And so, you know, I made the decision to get out because my entry was not as solid as Andy's. Andy was more patient and waited for something to bounce off that line and didn't get it. So um, it's actually a really good segment, Steve. Sometimes sometimes you can learn more uh, mm -hmm. about how a trader handles a, a, a position going against him versus, you know, jumping in something and screaming, woohoo, you know, because uh, uh, let's face it, you know, it, it's, it, it takes not only letting your winners run, but it takes cutting your losses a lot, of, you know, to, to make a, a successful trader. And that, that, was a, that was a good little segment there. Yeah, it uh, it was a good segment because it was it just finished so close. It could have gone either way, and it yeah. might go it might go better tomorrow. I, I wish it had. Now, for those that read the emails, let's just take a little quick look down here. Um, we had a few more names. I, I I gave you some other names that were kind of in the running. Let's take a look at how how those might have worked out. Not that it matters, but INSG also has a very high short float, forty percent. I am currently in this one, and it's just kind of sitting there going sideways. Fossil uh, Jewelers, just slowly kind of climbing higher, uh, not bad. I'll show you another one of these in a minute. I am also in this one, RRC, which is uh, Range Resources. Very nice looking cup and handle there. Mm -hmm. That was given out. Um, this was, I kind of almost wish we went with this. That was a beautiful look. This is what AR Resources looked like going into the weekend. Again, from the A table, nice push there. <laughs> Sun Power, as I mentioned, was called by the AI last week down here on that kind of a 20 day moving average bounce, moved higher since then. And then PRTS has just been a monster short squeeze, but you know, this is what it looked like two days ago. I just didn't really want to chase that, but you know, these things just have, they have a lot of life in them, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. um, RVP, I'm out, I'm following the advice I gave and I'm not gonna look back. I'll just move on to the next one. And Andy's got a much better position. Looks like it's a little higher after hours. So he's got a bit of a head start. But um, for me, it's worth it to just clear the decks on the ones that are not working. I'm always trying to weed the garden of the ones that are not working and um, stay in the ones that are. All right, anything else you wanna add to that before we move on? No, 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 it's a good breakdown. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's see, what, what, what else did I want to talk about here coming up? So yeah, the visit, the, the jam down. You guys, you know, I talk about the A table incessantly, but the A table is just a guide of, of, of ideas. And we're going to go through that in a minute. But I created a scan that's an actual alert um, that's called, and I don't think I have it. I'm going to have to go back to the cloud and get it. It's an actual alert that um, tells us when some of these stocks are going down and hitting their... 10 day moving average, kind of like we were hoping it would do here. What, why isn't that working? Load from cloud. There we go. Jam down to the 10 SMA. So let's just take a look at a few of these today. Again, these are new lows on the day, but they're new lows at an area of very interesting significance. All right, so the first one that came through was a CAR and 4250. This is the 15 minute. 42.50 came through right about there. Not a bad call. Let's look at the daily chart. 
So it's jamming down on the open. It's usually what these algorithms do, and it only gives me the um, new low if it's touching the 10-day moving average. BKE, look at that one, right on the open was the low of the day. So a lot of times, this is the low of the day that comes through on these names. And I just, you know, I talked about it last week. Uh, this one didn't work. You can tell it did and tell it didn't, but still, decent entry. The timing on these entries are pretty darn good. And this day was really no exception. So I just wanted to kind of revisit it. I think boot was a decent one too. And, oh, this is the one I'm in also, INSG. So I'm going to put that back on real time and I will give that out for people hey. to watch. What? Wait a minute, do you, do, you have, do you have yours set up on your uh, five day moving average? Your, your blue line there? Because it isn't your, isn't your 10 period your? Look, it's, it, it is, look. You can see oh, the daily. That's right. Okay, the daily. Yeah. There you go. It's funny because a lot of them are bouncing right at that five day. Yeah, yeah well, even better, even yeah. better. You know, I'm in sure. this. We'll, we'll move on to that here right now. So let me give out the jam down because I just gave it kind of a nice little shout out there, and it's very interesting. Again, it just looks for strong stocks that are having a momentary pull down, and I'll show you something here. I've got it turned off after two hours with the time filter. You see that the time filter says. Show me two minutes after the open, but stop showing me 120 minutes after the open. Kind of like I said earlier, it's all in the stocks, how they go out. I don't want to see stocks making lows at the end of the day. I want to see strong stocks making lows early in the day because that's where the algorithms try and shake people out. So I will share the jam down and we'll put it in the chat window there on the GoToWebinar chat window. Jam down to 10 SMA is the title. And there is that. So I had mentioned earlier in the breakdown of the market recap that I had to clear the decks last week and just look for things that popped back up and, you know, looked interesting. So I'll kind of go through a few of them here. And again, uh, the blue line right there, it points to the candle on the daily that I entered. So one, two, three, this is one of the first things I bought back. Um, kind of like the market. It's a stock I'm familiar with. It's a mining stock and it was breaking back above its moving averages and moving sideways. And I took a chance on it and I also added to it as well when it started to break out. So I'll probably start selling this one tomorrow. In two or three days of good movement, I'll start becoming a seller. This one I backed into nicely yesterday at the close. You can see it was uh, right about here. I just liked the way that UAVS, which is a name I've been making money in a couple of these runs back here and back here. I just take my two or three days and get out. I like the way it was moving sideways and settling. Oh, I love the way yesterday it jammed down, right, on the open and jammed down to the 10 and the 20, popped back up and held its own for the rest of the day. That's when I bought it. And then I backed into some maybe, maybe some good luck because it uh, really took off today. So my my expectation is, this is a perfect example, when I get a big green candle and I've been riding it all day, I'm looking to be a seller tomorrow, probably in the first half of the day. I would anticipate they're going to probably maybe take out new highs, and guess who's going to be selling half of his position up here at new highs rather than chasing the new highs, always trying to separate yourself from the herd. Um, RRC, again, I mentioned this one. Uh, I noticed AR Resources is doing really well, but this one is just really becoming a cup and handle poster child. And it's not too late, really. I think if we get a good break above today's high, you could see some interesting movement in that one tomorrow. For, for whatever reason, you know, these have been moving strong. Again, like that AR has been moving very strong. What else did I pick up? Oh, Solo. I picked up Solo today. Uh, a little bit, I was anticipating the jam down, but I was way too impatient. I bought it too early, suffered a little bit of pain on the jam down, and then it's moving up nicely on the daily. You could see three days ago it had a nice green candle and needed two or three days of really pretty decent consolidation and pullback before hopefully it wants to move higher again. Uh, INSG, this is also was on the short list for trade of the week. We saw it on the jam down earlier, and I've been in it for a few days now, three days now, just sitting and waiting for a possible short squeeze. As long as the candles stay above the moving averages, I'm going to be patient. And then uh, the electric vehicles like Solo also ride as an electric vehicle and just kind of taking a chance in the consolidation of that one. So the point is, these were things that I had five days ago had to go back and you know look for new longs because the market wasn't going to roll over and the market wants to go higher. So rather than chasing things, you just look for things that are consolidating nicely and 
jump in and anticipate and hopefully participate if they do move. And then lastly, what's not on there was the one that I sold at the close. It was the one that was my only loser and we had to let it go. We've broken that one down enough as it is. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll just go through and see if we can find some price alerts of anything yeah, that's empty that might be showing up as a good um, good setup. And we'll go to we'll go to the big one, the A table senior with all of them. The biggest short float right now is iRobot, and that one might have a short squeeze tomorrow. I'm just going to put an alert in there because that's at the top of the list. That is the big daddy of the short squeezes right now, possibly. Um, we'll see what happens there. Nope, not going to chase that. That one already went. Well, this is a nice consolidation. I do like this. The $200 stock, but just for the point of illustrating, that could be an interesting price alert right there if it wants to go higher. There's our friend RVP. Time, timing is everything. It depends on your entry. Like Andy has a good time. Now, this was nice three days ago. But it, this is kind of what RVP, I was hoping RVP would do. Look, it didn't even touch its 10-day moving average and still took off. But we didn't get that with RVP. Um, I wouldn't chase this after three days of movement. That's interesting. Let's see if we can find anything else that's consolidating. And then I've got a concept I'll show you to try and hone in. Now, this would have been a nice one, too, if we had seen it two days ago, right there, touched it right on the daily open and took off. That sideways action was always really interesting on these ones that are waiting for a reason to move higher. And that's just a straight up trend. And again, you can go through a lot of these names and not see a whole lot, but I'm gonna show you something we can do here in a second to try and, there's our friend FUV, that was a fun trade of the week. Good question. What is my search selection criteria for the A table? I don't want to see things that have that have run. I don't want to chase them. I'm looking for things that are consolidating. And if I can say, oh, here we go. This is a nice one. I like this. This is nice little consolidation. It's not really moving that much higher, but we do have 22% short the float still in Viacom. Could be worth not losing track of something like that. So I'm looking for things that have not run too far which is a really good segue because as you can see, a lot of things in here have been um, running too far. So we're gonna go back and I'm gonna actually put an alert in this one too, I think, kind of like that. Avis, nah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that one. Okay, here's a good example, right? So why would I have something like this on this scan if it's six, seven days green? And if I sit here and say, I don't wanna chase this stuff, why do I have it? Well. Here's something we could do. We could take the A table and duplicate it, and we could just change a few things to try and maybe not have so many chases on there. One of the things I would do, I'm gonna lower the composite rating just to 75 to see if we can open up anything. I'm gonna raise the short float to say 15%. Um, might even change the average daily volume to a half a million shares a day. And not five million, Steve, half a million. And then this is the big one. We're not looking to chase things, right? So we have this filter called range, five day range, five day range in percent. I'm gonna grab this filter and I'm gonna cap it. I'm gonna say, look, I don't wanna see things that have moved so strongly. Let's say we cap it at 8%. So we're not gonna see anything that's moved more than 8% in a five-day range. And let's launch that. And all of a sudden, we have a nice little short list here. Oh, look at that, right off the bat. I really like that one, Disk Discovery. Now, why didn't Discovery come through on the first one? I can tell you because I lowered the score from 80 to 76. So sometimes you can do that. If you're not seeing enough items that you want to you know, scan through, do a couple of the things I just did here. Maybe lower the average daily volume, lower your score a little bit. Um, but this one right off the bat, I like that. So I'm going to put an alert right, right above that, that high for the most part. All right, now we're starting to see hopefully more compressions because of that filter I added. The five-day range cannot exceed 8%. So we shouldn't see any ones that are running too far. Now this one's consolidating nicely. Now this would have been a nice one to see back there. 
Look at that, beautiful. And then it moved nicely out of that range. Not much I can do with that, but the point is, is we can use that filter to try and not find things that have run too far too fast that we're just gonna pass on anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Andy likes this one, so we're gonna finish with this one. Look, Twinkies and pizza at the end, isn't that nice? <laughs> Yeah, Twinkies and Pizza. Now, Twinkies is a 76 score. That's why it didn't show up on the A table, because the A table's defaulted to uh, to 80. But let's just go ahead and put, there's a high right there on the open. We'll pop that in there as well. Okay, so that's kind of what I look for, uh, for things on the A table, things that are consolidating. And this changes every day, the the com the um, the composite changes every day. Things that might not look good today might look really good in a couple of days from now. So always just, um, you know, Roxana asked for the modified A table and I didn't save it, did I? I didn't, I'll duplicate that. While I'm doing that, I will duplicate that that I just did and drop it in there. While I'm doing that, we'll, we can finish off in the last five minutes here with some of you guys, if you have chart requests and what you wanna look at, we can go ahead and take a look at that. So what I did was I took that down to 75 I took the short float up to 15%. I took the half a million shares, and then we added five day range, five day range in percent. We added that and made it capped out at eight. You could make that even less if you wanted to, but I think you get the point. All right, so this is for uh, whoever asked for this. Roxana asked for the new modified version. There we go. Copy, and I'll drop that and in the. I don't get confused because he did. He didn't change the a, the name on that. So just make sure you're grabbing the wrong, right one. Modified, go, yeah. Yeah. I put it. I changed the name in the chat window, but I didn't change oh, the name did? on the actual. No, I didn't okay. change it on the actual scan, but I did so. Okay, they can grab it and do it. Yeah. All right, so if I haven't missed any questions, we'll just uh, move on and look at a dozen or so charts here for you guys to, uh, oh, I will give out the price alerts as well, because I did make a few price alerts. Look, we got five of them in there. We can always check back and see how they look. While you're doing that, uh, Vineet asks, uh, is there any study material that will help us to apply uh, trading basics uh, to educate decisions while trading? Very good question, and it's, it's always important to get that. Now, we do provide a lot of times in these afternoon webinars, like, like Steve was just doing. Uh, we'll definitely give some education during that. And you can also come to our support webinar if we don't have any questions on the software. That's at every day, Monday through Friday at 12 Eastern. Uh, and we all the time will help people with their trading questions in there as well. Uh, we try not to we have so much material when it comes to the software, you know, that we just it's it's a hard time for us, you know, for us to you know, be providing all that uh, trading education as well. It's just, it's just too much. But uh, I did just drop in the ebook, the swing trading ebook. Uh, that's in the chat window. So I grabbed that link, and that would okay, be for a, a little you. bit of that should help a little bit. And, yeah. and I, there's a whole section in there on the A table, and I talk a lot about what I look for and what are some of the good uh, good setups coming out of there. So a good uh, yeah. good reminder to, sure. to put that in there for sure. All right, so let's look at some charts and we'll bring Scott in in five minutes and uh, any announcements. Okay, da, da, da. First one was plug. First one's plug. Oh, I know exactly what this one looks like. It looks good. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it was threatening the last uh, couple of days to maybe break below, but um, oh, that's a horrible close again. It just likes to give it little pins and needles on the upside. Let me just put it this way. Plug is still alive. It's still in play. Um, keep an eye on it tomorrow. It could uh, try and do something. But the moment that it posts a close down here in no man's land under those moving averages, it's like a dripping water faucet. All right. I just don't see it hanging on. So it's going to have to do something here um, pretty soon. What's next? Uh, two people asked. Oh, it's the same, same person. Hello, Gain. Can you show us how to create alerts on tickers when they return to the 20 SMA? Well, um, what I would do, Jerry, is I would say, you know, the jam down to the 10 SMA, the cloud code is in there. And all it does is, there it is, there's the jam down. I'm using the 10 SMA filter, and this is how you would do it with a 20. Just take the 20 SMA, and you say, show me a new low, but only show me no more than a tenth of a percent below the, the 20 SMA. 
and maybe a five hundredth of a percent above. So that little bracket, that little window, which uh, encapsulates the 20 SMA on a daily chart, that's when you would use that filter and that's how you would use it in, in the case of your question. All right, the next chart to look at is ITRM. A big gap up today. Uh, gave it back on the middle of the day and then got it got it back towards the close. It's kind of a giant spinning top. Didn't close at highs or lows. You know, this could go either way tomorrow. Um, it was nice if you were positioned before today, that's for sure, but it closed above its intraday simple moving average. So it does have that going for it. We'll give it that. Um, what do I think of UBX? Well, that's a big three-day move there. Let's let's look in the past and see if it's going to run into any resistance. So it looks like it's got a gap to fill up here around 11.75. Maybe call it 11. Yeah, 11 could be an interesting target for that one, but you've had three solid days. There's a lot of space between the closing price and the rising moving averages. Just be aware of that. There's no way to create an inside bar on the 15 or five minute time frame. Um, I'm I wish we could. We don't have the ability to do that uh, intraday. We can do it on the uh, daily charts, though. Okay, another request for Dave Snow. Boy, trying to go today. It's trying to go today, but it gave it back at the close, and it, it's got a personality of doing that too. It's got three days in the last week where it just couldn't close on highs, but the good news is it technically did close back above its. 50-day moving average, which is rising, and so that's a hint of a start of a mustard seed for you uh, on that one. Uh, all right, a few more here. GSAT, very nice day in GSAT. Hopefully, you'd see some follow-through in that name tomorrow, and then um, you know maybe you could take some profits. <laughs> start or start taking some profits. Looks good. Uh, Jag X. Looks like it's moving higher. Uh, couldn't quite close above the 20, but I give it a good A plus for a nice higher candle from yesterday with a little bit of a bottom tail. Doesn't look bad. I would hope to see some follow through in that one tomorrow. Oh, Nicola, what is that one doing? I wanted to look at that one. You know, I was looking at Nicola and I kind of mumbled to myself, it was looking really, really good right there. And this is the kind of stuff we look for. But there's just something about this name getting blasted with Brad PR and some of the stuff. It's, it just keeps me away from that one. So mm -hmm. the last three days, one, two, three days closing below the moving average, right? Looks good there. Not so much here. So not, not as much of a fan as I was a few days ago on that one, Bill. Oh, I just locked up. All right, we'll do a few more. And we'll end with Chris on Macy's. All right, GM is looking good. It's kind of peaked its head above there. GM's probably ready for some consolidation there, Bill. Um, BNGO, I know I looked at that one earlier. Bingo was his name out. Nice uh, break from a wedge. That's kind of what I see there. So hopefully it can build on today. Didn't really close with a lot of vigor in your highs, but I'd like to be able to see that candle in free airspace do something and build on it tomorrow. Uh, VET. F fell and then May season will bring Scott in. Kind of sloshing back and forth in between this range. I just see a giant range between 430 and six bucks. So you're just kind of midway in that range there, it seems like to me. Um, F cell, I think that's a good looking one. Yeah, and it's getting ahead of itself a little bit. Um, what what can you say bad about F cell? It's just been a horse. Um, maybe look to be a buyer if it pulls back into these moving averages, but I wouldn't chase it up here. And then the last one, Macy's, and then we'll bring Scott in. Uh, Macy's got ahead of itself. There must have been one part of that short squeeze, huh? Did they have a big short? Yes, they do. And I can tell. I, look, look at these charts that did this last week, and a lot of them got uh, caught up in the short squeeze. That being said, if that's the reason that it did go, it makes me suspect to think it can go again, but it's putting up a good fight. I'll, I'll give it that. All right, and anything else you want to add to the session before we bring Scott back? Uh, no, except for uh, Jenny was looking for something uh, bouncing off the 20. I'd built one a while back, and I dropped it into the chat window okay. uh, for her. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thanks for the questions, everybody. Um, hopefully, we learned a few things this week, and we'll try and learn again each week as we go through Trade of the Week webinars. I'll bring in Scott for any announcements. Thank you. There we go. That's the mute button. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. A um, couple items on the way out. Uh, grab that earnings ebook. It's very helpful. It helps you take charge of earnings season. Use it to your advantage. Go to tradeideas.com slash earnings. It's free. Go ahead and get that download. It's got some cloud links to help you out too. Um, search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to your pods. Listen to the newest episode. I'm going to have a new one out soon. So if you subscribe, you'll get that new one as soon as it drops. Got a code, opportunities, good for 15% off the first month or year of trade ideas or an upgrade good for this month. So jot that code down, give yourself an upgrade or a new subscription and uh, you'll thank us. Uh, so you can find Steve on Twitter at Today Trader. Also find out trade ideas and some other handles that you'll see as soon as you start following one of them. Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook page to like and share stuff with your friends. And as always, email all your questions to info at trade-ideas.com. It goes into our help desk and gets you the help that you need as quickly as possible. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, all. We'll get the recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. Have a good one. All right. See you next time, guys. Uh, thank you for all your kind words, guys. I'll see you on uh, Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>